Are you using the art of coaching to supersize and grow your business? Sharon horn from here with Supersize Business. And today, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about not adding a coaching element. I think we've talked about that as a strategy already. But adding a coaching element to the internal workings of your organization in order to grow and build and supersize it. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, number one, coaching internally with our people is probably more important than adding an actual coaching element or an additional stream of income to your business because our most valuable resource, whether we actually admit it or not, is always going to be investing in ourselves and investing in the people that are helping us to grow and build and supersize our business. Now, coaching and structured coaching is just a process and a process we should all, I think everyone should have as part of their organizational training and development and uh, continuous improvement processes, but it's just a way to help individuals and teams get the best possible results they can by improving the things that they do really, really well and building on them. And then the things that they don't do particularly well, helping them to decide if those are things that they need to improve on and change, or if they're things that just don't matter. And we can put them in places in our organization where we build on their strengths and the things that don't matter just don't matter because we are all different. We are all unique. We all have different talents and abilities and things that drive us and motivate us. And so we want to structure our organizations. And that is part of leadership, but it's also part of coaching and helping people to become a continually improving, better version of themselves. Uh, that's kind of an underlying current in all of my businesses, as well as in the businesses that I work with. If you don't take care of your people, they won't take care of your business. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your business. So um, there's some really good examples of, of companies that do this well. I've worked for some of the best corporations on the planet. Uh, my first job out of college was working for Procter & Gamble. And Procter & Gamble, part of why I chose to go with them as my first corporate outside of college job was because they were known for their professional development and their career paths and uh, helping people to achieve goals and objectives within the organization that they wanted to achieve. Now, I found in about five years that what I wanted to do didn't fit their internal coaching model or mode. They actually, back when I was there, had tracks. They had three tracks you could take it through the organization. And unfortunately, I wanted to mix a couple of those tracks, and that was not an option. I was told repeatedly that was not an option. It was never going to happen. And instead of beating my head against that wall, I decided to take a huge signing bonus and join another corporate organization. So uh, each of us have to find our own trail and our own track and our own journey. Uh, but as part of that, when we're working in an organization, one of the best things we can do is help people to become the best possible versions of themselves. I guess I've said that twice now. Uh, but Google to Google um, has a thing in their organization where they hook a new employee up. It's, I guess it's called Googler to Google uh, G2G program, where they hook a, an experienced person up with all the new hires, and they make sure that they have a mentorship and a coach that can help them navigate and get used to the culture in the organization. Every organization has a culture. And one of the biggest struggles I found personally in corporate America was deciphering that culture without anyone that, that was there to actually give you the real scoop. I had a couple of corporate experiences that I look back on now and I'm like, oh my God. Uh, one was in an organization where there were eight unions, eight different unions. And I was always kind of a hands-on person. So literally hundreds of times a year, I would get grieved by one of the unions or other because I did something I wasn't supposed to do. Now, that's a that's a story for another day. But Google to Google, Googler to Googler is a great example of that. Again, Procter & Gamble, great training programs, great opportunities. Uh, we did have some women management groups that I was a part of that we started actually when I was there, as well as some internal mentorship things, but there wasn't really a formal plan like Googler to Googler at the time that I was there. They might have one now, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Mayo Clinic does an incredible job with leadership development. They're known for that as well in the healthcare industry. Uh, another example is uh, an organization called Loop, I am not familiar with, and they are in retail. Oh no, let, not, that's another, Never mind. That's for tomorrow. Today, 
Starbucks. Starbucks does an incredible job training their folks in customer service. Why? Because they're a very customer service oriented, customer focused, customer centric organization. I would suspect other organizations have internal programs, but these are just some that I am personally familiar with. Uh, they, why do we want to do this? Number one, it enhances performance. Number two, it helps people on board. It doesn't have to just be for new hires either. Uh, I went through a training in, in at Procter & Gamble called Middleness, uh, which is really interesting. It's for middle managers where you're you're not brand new and inexperienced, but you're also not at a more executive level yet. You're in the middle and there's challenges of every place you are in the process, just like there's challenges with every stage of growth for our businesses as we're growing and building and supersizing them. We need to learn and grow into that next stage before we can actually master that stage to move on and to grow and to advance. Uh, that's, that's true as an employee. That's true as a business owner, an employer. That's true as anything in life, right? We're not born knowing how to do these things. We need to learn and grow and develop. And one of the fastest, easiest, most effective ways to do that is to have coaches and mentors that help us do that. And so one of the best things you can do for your company is set that up. And I've been in organizations and I've worked with organizations where that's forced and it, it doesn't feel right. It has to have the element of, hey, this is the right two people or the right group to put together for this. And you have to figure out what goes with your culture in order to provide that. Maybe it's a group coaching type program. Maybe it's a training class, whatever. Whatever works for your culture and your organization. Uh, again, I've been in a lot of group trainings that just are flat and, and not really getting the results that they want. That's why part of coaching always needs to be continually evaluating the results that you're getting and continuous improvement. I harp on continuous improvement a lot. Why? Because that's how we grow. All right. Love to know what you're doing in your organization. Do you have some kind of a mentorship or coaching type internal program in your business? Yes or no? Share your stories below so we can learn from one another. And I will be with you tomorrow. I think we're going to actually talk about uh, strategies for employee training and um, building our teams tomorrow. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, see you tomorrow.